Hey guys, it's Alexander Williamson here, and we have a disaster on our hands. So, we got the, you probably saw the species spotlight last week, filmed two weeks ago, of the Tatia, um, the Tatia uh, Gal uh, Galaxius, or Galaxy Woodcat, and right now, I see, uh, I see a Cully Load, oh, he got past us, um, and we put them in this tank, and uh, two of them anyways, and this had the ruby tetras, this had all sorts of um, little uh, Corydoras, had my bumblebee uh, gobies, the true bumblebee gobies, and the other morning I came in and everybody looked listless. Uh, Soon I started looking at the fish. This was like 4 in the morning. And I had fed them at like 10 o'clock at night. And look at this. They've all got ick. They all look really uh, malnourished all of a sudden. So, I mean, malnourishment doesn't happen all of a sudden. Something really beat up these fish. Everything in here, you can see it started to die off. I'm getting clouds of like just this thick mulm it's it's just plant matter and bacteria dying uh near the the sp uh, sponge filter i've been trying to get rid of it with a turkey baster yet again one of my favorite tools of the trade i got almost all the fish out of here that i'm like truly worried about my big healthy female endlers the line that i've been working on for a long time uh, and then I got, uh, you know, everybody except for who passed away. And in the middle of the night, that was, if you count all the baby guppies and all the shrimp, over a hundred critters died within six hours of me of checking on this tank. Uh, I took a test before I put the Tatia Mosaica, or ta not Tatia Mosaica, Tatia Galaxius in here. And, uh, you know, it's old tank syndrome is what happened. Uh, you can see that there's roots and plants that have been decaying in here. They make ammonia, which then breaks down into nitrites and nitrates. And quite frankly, we probably should have had a hang off the back filter for this load in here. That and we're using sand substrate, uh, which is okay in some conditions, but we did have this tank kind of overstocked and all it took was a cord a air hose coming loose and one fish dying i don't know if those two things are linked but i happened to notice when i checked on everybody that was uh those two things happened to have, ha have occurred. Look at how bad the water quality is towards the back. Uh, granted, I did dig this thing the heck up, um, trying to find all the Corydoras and Gudgeons and Guppies and Endlers. Um, I got, from what I saw, I spent a few hours and I got a lot of the pregnant shrimp out as well. Uh, mostly Malawa uh, or Malala and then gold ring or uh, sorry gold nebula shrimp you can see here though i just have more and more shrimp bodies every hour it's been 12 hours since i discovered it they're just dying and melting i checked the uh, ph and the ammonia and everything uh before i put the uh wood cats in here and I put them in, obviously, with a bunch of wood and val. And this val was planted. Granted, granted it was planted. Uh, and it can grow quickly, but there's some issues in that it was rooted in sand. And yes, it does grow through coarse sand and, and gravel somewhat. But not at the speed in which uh, necessarily sucks up all those nutrients that we need it to. And so it was really easy for this system to run away on us plus we have all this algae growing um which i didn't mind i like this algae i think it looks nice it's the same as like marimo moss balls and in fact i put marimo moss balls in here originally and i think that may be where i got this type of algae from uh let me move some things around here real quick um but this 
this guy here is an old, old sponge filter, and it's been covered in that, uh, it's been covered in the, uh, the green hair algae, uh, the, the, the shag carpet algae, as I like to call it, for a while now, and so now I'm taking pieces of that stuff and literally just putting them in a bucket. I'm, you know, the other thing, you can see this yellow bacteria in here, um, or mold or algae, whatever it may be. But what I've been doing is going along the whole tank and injecting air in here after I got the fish out. And every once in a while, you'll see a pocket of bubbles just take off and rise to the top. And you can actually catch it in the tube like this. And it smells like farts. It smells like sulfur and poop and methane. And it's another sign that we have old tank syndrome. So we should have been moving the substrate or vacuuming it. Or on the other far end of the spectrum, you can avoid this sometimes. This tank's a couple years old now. You can avoid that sometimes by simply not messing with the substrate. By letting it be and letting mold and its bacteria, uh, you know, stratify and do its thing uh but i think the wood cats um uh, when one died it spiked the ammonia the body did and that just spelled the end for the rest of the critters as well it started a chain reaction of that ammonia and then pretty soon the ph started changing and then i went in in a panic and tried to grab out the critters that i could um, and then I noticed that all throughout the, the bottom of the tank, really foul smelling bacteria that's just, um, you know, you got the chemical byproducts of bacteria. But if you look in here, you can see that that algae was actually just kind of floating underneath the, the substrate too with that anaerobic bacteria. And so that's why this tank i tried originally when i made it and it lasted two years and, and it's my fault for not turning it over i tried to use various sizes of stone and fluorite and crushed uh, coral and sand and it worked fine for a while but um after i don't know how long i guess probably the last year i really stopped uh gravel vacuuming the mold just as an experiment um, and, and the sandy floor, mulm being the, this junk that I'm suctioning up from the bottom. Uh, but you can see here that there's actually space, um, of air pockets and gases. So when I take air and I, and water and I inject it under there, you'll actually see bubbles come up and then I can suck up the, uh, the just gross debris and really bad smelling uh, bacteria water that's just been stagnant doesn't have enough oxygen in it there's probably not enough water flow in this tank is another problem i think we're gonna have to switch it from these sponge filters to a hang off the back filter like one of these uh, that being said uh, a lot of these uh, hanger on guppies uh, and baby guppies I kind of want to see, I know some of you may think that this is mean, but I kind of want to see um, how everyone's going to be. I'll treat them for ick, but um, other than that, I want to see if anybody survives. Um, there are also quite a few uh, Malawa shrimp in here who seem to be doing well, which is very odd because shrimp are usually the first to go when you have uh, a disaster like this, a collapse, uh, old tank syndrome. But here they are, running all over. Their babies are fine and dandy. Um, and so it's a bit of a head scratcher. And, uh, you know, I'm probably going to have to basically restart this tank. You see all this, these pockets in here that just were filled with this gross bacteria. Um, so it's just a reminder that if you're going to use a dense substrate like this, uh, either have a plant or a Malaysian trumpet snail, something that's overturning that substrate, uh, you know, so that you're not getting it, so it's not so stagnant, uh, because it really can sneak up on you, and all, is, all it takes is 
uh, you know, a little bit of neglect for a few weeks, maybe you forget a water change or whatever, uh, you know, there are many things that could happen. Uh, and the most common being that you have something die, uh, heaven forbid, a, a pleco or something large, or a catfish, a Tatia uh, galaxius, and then his buddy, who's also very sensitive to this sort of thing, uh, also passed away. Then we have the Kuli loaches that burrow into the sand, but they were not doing their job. I thought they'd be burrowing all over and helping to mitigate this issue in this tank, as I thought the Coreys would be. But they both had picked different spots. The Coreys under here, under the filter, and the uh, Kuli loaches in the back of the tank. And they basically had little dens set up underneath rocks. They did not care at all uh, to, to be looking and hunting for little things just in the normal substrate out in the open. And so that leaves you with this substrate that has all this junk in it. And some of it is fine. Some of it is good bacteria that's settled in. But when you see algae and things like that growing, then you know that there's energy, there's nitrogen, there's ammonia or something growing it, especially if it's a photosynthetic uh, algae and it's under there. And so you need to either gravel vac that. Um, and you don't want to, if you are gravel vacing a tank like this, you don't want to do it all at once. Uh, you probably do a third at a time and no more because uh, you can actually suck up all that good bacteria that is in there mixed in, and then you can have a tank collapse too. And I think what happened is I made sure that things were uh, well adjusted. I fed a big serving of bloodworms to do that uh, species spotlight video. I moved some stones around, which kicked up some mold, kicked up a lot of this debris and stuff like this algae, uh, stuff like uh, the roots of water lettuce, uh, stuff like all these dead duckweed um, leaves and all of the hornwort or, um, you know, different floating water plants. They really uh, break down into... Uh, quite a bit of ammonia if you have them in here and if there's just little pieces of them then you end up with this floating uh, junk that's just building ammonia day after day and your bacteria is going to try to compensate but it needs an aerated surface with water passing through with that ammonia for that to happen otherwise it turns into pockets and you're in trouble. You can also just go around with a turkey baster or a stick even and stir things up every few days. You know, pick a, a sixth of the tank, maybe something like this, air, the size of this area here. Mix it up. Then the next day over here. Uh, that kind of stuff can, can also help. Um, but it, it, if you're worried about it, it could also kick off uh, that event. So check your ammonia and and your nitrite nitrate level uh if if you think you're in danger of that all that being said this is the second time i've had it happen ironically it was wood cats that told me it happened before they're very sensitive to this sort of thing and once they died then the tetras died then the uh gobies died and you know within hours those shrimps start to really break them down and it just became an ammonia fest we had bright green in the test tube instead of a, a yellow ish clear color and uh, I was able to save a lot of the quarries uh, with some uh, burns on their gills I was able to put aloe and catapa leaves in their water and they're doing okay now up hiding in the moss up here um, but it's just a warning to you guys. I got some of the plecos out too. One of the plecos died that was about four inches. And so now you have to be on watch out that none of these bigger fish that you moved uh, die in one of these other tanks because you could also have the next, uh, next in line to collapse uh, take place. So we got to make sure that all the quarries and everybody's doing okay for the next few days. I hope this helps you guys maybe prevent a problem. You know, I've been doing this for years and usually I see it coming. It's kind of odd that the second time in 
decades of doing this. Uh, it was with first it was with the Tatia Mosaicas, then it was with the Tatia Galaxias. So it's very odd to me that it started both times with a wood cat. Uh, it's not like I have an abundance of wood cats. It's kind of a special event. Uh, we have a wood cat that I did save, one uh, that's over here, uh, back back over there, back by that pleco. So hopefully, oh no, it looks like it might not be saved. Yeah, not so much. Well... If you guys uh, want to like this video uh, in hopes of stopping somebody else from losing their... <sighs> Man, their fish. He was fine just a minute ago when I made this. Not a minute, but a little while ago when I made this video in this tank. Um, but if it can help somebody from losing their fish, um, please like, share, subscribe. Um, you know, I, I share my failures as well as my successes in the hobby. And, you know, actually, this is the this is a Hebrosis Corridora. Uh, so he didn't make it. Must have been too much of a shock to move him. Um, again, I like using the turkey baster. I don't have to actually touch the fish. I can bring them up close, examine what's going on, and then... Um, you know, get a net or whatever I need to do. Um, all right, guys. Well, on that note, I'm going to clean this up. We got to clean out that tank. We're probably going to have to kind of start it from scratch again. We can move the plants and the hardscape. Uh, it's probably not any sort of like toxic bacteria and the, the, uh, the guppies that seem to have, or the endlers, I should say, that seem to have all that ick and or columnaris it's totally stress induced i would guess i'm not about to put them with a group of their buddies or anything um just in case they're gonna stay in a qt situation but um that's my guess i don't i don't think there that there's any sort of virus or anything that bacteria that that kicked it off so all right guys i will talk to you later um have a good evening take care of your critters of the people around you your plants your tank your tank maintenance avoid these sort of things and uh, of course take care of yourself so you can do those first things and i think we're all going to end up better off if we even half of us do that all right guys good night wish me luck bye